things all. It's the devious monkey here. Continuing with the test. Today's test is going to be Catalyst Browse with this A7C. Since it has gyro data, I figured what the hell, let me see what it looks like. I already know that it's like, you know, the typical meh for Sony stabilization. Now, I do have the Sony A7C, but I shut off stabilization, but the lens, the 16 to 35, has OSS, so I don't know how that's gonna affect it at all, but I figured what the hell, I'll give it a whirl. Now, one thing, I gotta figure out how I can open up this freaking Bluetooth grip and fix it because it just, it just jerks back and forth. Uh, it, it's, it's not tight inside there. Giggity, and it, it needs to be tightened. I don't know if I can tighten it. I don't know if it's possible, if it's just shoddily put together, but either way, I would love to be able to go in there and tighten that fitting up at this hinge to get it to stop wiggling like that. Okay, basically, I decided that I was gonna go out for my walk and test this Catalyst Browse. Well, I'm not testing the Catalyst Browse on the walk, but I am walking hand holding this a7c with the 16 to 30 i don't want to say 16 to 50 the 16 to 35 f4 oss lens i put everything back together so it's back in the cage i got the handle on there and i am using the road wireless go rather than the movo vxr10 just because i like the road wireless go better <sighs> Although I have been using it today and I used it in studio on the Insta360, then I put it back on the A7C and took it out and tested it driving, walking through the woods, all that shit. And it has about half power on the receiver and about a third to one quarter of the power left on the transmitter so like i said yesterday it just kind of bothers me that the transmitter is losing power faster than the receiver i don't know why that is but that's what it is so i'm gonna have to look into or i guess i'm just gonna have to contact road and see if there's something i can do about that it, so far as like hey replace this shit because i don't want to have to buy it again don't tell them though i actually would buy it again that's how much I like it. All right, I also know from the ZV-1 that I'm gonna get cropped, or I mean, I'm gonna have to crop. That's all part of the Catalyst Browse because I have this 16 millimeter at this wide end for the lens that even if it crops in, it, it's still there's still enough real estate on the screen that it shouldn't be too bad. Now, I know talking to Yankee Cowboy and uh, seeing what other people have been doing when they do Catalyst Browse is they basically crop it in 10%, which is pretty minimal. And that seems to be enough to do the trick to make it look like it's on a gimbal. I guess I'm gonna find out. And again, that's why I'm doing this. Just figured I'd walk around the neighborhood and test this out. Now. I have been whining about this since I got it. It is heavy. And right now I got a wicked knot in my back. So it, it's making this even worse. At some point, I'm most definitely gonna have to get that 20 mil 1.8 because I'm certain <laughs> that it's lighter than this 16 to 35 lens. And if you saw my video yesterday, you'll have seen that the lens is even heavier than the camera. So couple those together with all the other shit put together uh, because this Bluetooth grip isn't all that light either. You're talking a lot of weight. Now, is this as much as walking around with maybe an a7 III? Or I don't know that anybody vlogs with an a7R4, but an a7R4 with the Sigma 24 to 70, I, I do know that Terry Warfield does handheld vlogging with his G Master 24 to 70 
on, I think it's an A7 III. So that's gotta be pretty heavy. Don't know if I'd wanna do that all the time, especially not the way I do shit because I actually do a walking, talking vlog. A lot of times I'm either on this walk or I'm back in the woods somewhere or you know at Pleasure House Point and that shit gets heavy, especially given all the other stuff I carry. Now tomorrow, can't wait, I have the new Mindshift bag coming in that hopefully will alleviate a lot of my issues insofar as going into the woods or going on these hikes or whatever that I will have something that distributes the weight properly over both shoulders and is highly padded so I can you know I'm just, not like I'm gonna load all my lenses up in there I don't have that many but I'll have everything put into that bag including a big ass water bottle thanks Zeus because most of the times I walk into the woods I forget to take water with me and then I'm ready to die because I get lost so I'll have that and then I am going to now that I don't have multiple cameras for the studio setup I am going to reacquire the newer travel size tripod that I bought I'm going to take off the Manfrotto I think it's a 701 HDV fluid head because I just don't need to have that I'll put the original newer head back on there for this thing so that way when I'm walking in the woods you know I can use it to get some b-roll I even hate to say b-roll I can use it to get footage whilst I'm shooting pictures of birds and big feet and whatever the hell else is back there we'll see and I think that that will well I mean I know as far as like watching the videos for that particular bag that particular backpack that there are like three different ways you can put a tripod on the bag and so I will definitely be utilizing the like the center portion that actually has a thing that flips out to hold the legs and I think that that Niebuhr travel tripod is perfect for all of this it's small it's light and it'll do the trick and I see a bunny you won't be able to see the bunny because he's too far away and now he's bolted underneath the cars okay so that's what's going to be coming in tomorrow I don't think there's anything else like there needs to be uh, I did and then I think I mentioned it in yesterday's video I did send all of the APS-C stuff to Adorama they reached out to me they said that I had a lot of nice gear that they were very interested in we discussed you know their their pricing structure and all that uh, based on what he told me I think that I should be getting a fairly f decent price for it all we'll see how you doing uh, but I don't know it, I mean if it's if it's not more than what KEH offered me then I won't take the deal and they'll have to send it back to me and then unfortunately I'll have to go with private sales which I really don't want to do. If you couldn't tell, I freaking hate doing that shit because I just hate dealing with people because they're such buttholes. So hopefully Adorama will come through and, and give me a decent enough price that it'll work out. So fingers crossed. Okay, otherwise, what else is there? Uh, how long have I been filming? Eight minutes, 45 seconds. Okay, uh, So next week will be the last week that I will actually be working entirely from home. Unless something unusual happens. But the way it goes is that the second half of the quarter happens after next week. So I'm going to have to schedule out all my meetings. Six weeks worth of meetings. And they're all going to be on the road. I'm back to visiting dealers. Uh, I mean, unless this pandemic takes another shift for the worst, or my clients don't want me to come there, which is highly possible. We'll see. So it's going to be back on the road, and I'm going to be going to new places that I haven't been before. <sighs> Mixed feelings, because I am excited to get back out on the road. But I'm also like, Bleh. I don't want to get back out on the road, because over the last year, I've built... Uh, you know a I guess quite a routine for myself 
not being on the road. So I get all my work done, I have plenty of time to myself. Now I'm gonna be sitting in traffic with my thumb up my butt a lot, which I'm not looking forward to, and we'll see what happens. The only good thing is that I will be working off the company time and I will be traveling to new places that I haven't been or that I haven't been in a long time. I mean, I've been to Philly, I just haven't been there in a long time. And, and then New Jersey, Delaware, that's all new to me. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting a lot more pictures and footage from places that I've never been. Okay, that's really it. I just sort of wanted to BS, talk, and walk for a while whilst I have this. Oh, and I guess I should tell you my settings. So right now, I have this set. Of course, it's on manual mode. I always do manual mode now. Uh, I have it on 1 320th because they say you got to jack up your shutter speed in order for Catalyst Brass to work decently. I'm a little dark, although, you know, we know how this walk goes with the sky being all bright. And then I walk out and boom, I get hit by the sun. So I'm at 1 320th, F4, and right now it's at ISO 160 because I keep putting it to auto ISO. And that's it. I mean, autofocus, continual autofocus. And right now I have it on auto white balance. I, I've pretty much used auto white balance the entire time because I don't, you know, I just haven't wanted to play with that too much. So we'll see what happens when I get home and I pull this footage and I run it through Catalyst Browse first. I mean, I can always lighten or darken things. Well, I don't think I'll ever have to darken it but I might have to lighten it because there have been a lot of portions of this walk where I look kind of dark on the tiny ass screen, but I don't know. All right, that's it. That's all I got. Well, hopefully this turns out well, and hopefully, that's a big hopefully, it doesn't take a long ass time to render this in Catalyst Browse because when I did it the last time with the ZV-1, it took way the hell too long and there was no way I was gonna add that time into my editing flow because there's no flow in that. It just took too damn long and I wasn't gonna do it. I don't know. We'll find out and I'll let you know. And that's it, that's all I got for you today. So, so thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe and as always, forward and up.